Greetings. We wish to welcome you once again in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to the book of Acts continuing here at Cloverdale Bible Way. This morning we have Brother David Adamora. We wish to welcome you, Brother David. And Brother David's been a part of our assembly for over nine years and has been a tremendous blessing to the church. He's been a strength to the church. He's been a part of what God's been doing over the last year, year and a half, Brother David. And I know you've been experiencing a few things yourselves, and, and we've been doing a, a series on, on the different ones that God's been affecting through, through the moving of the Holy Spirit. And uh, I know you've had a part to play in this. Uh, you've been a solid, you've been a, a, like a little pillar, and you've been a support to what's been going on. And we'd like to hear from your side now what you've seen and, and how God played a part through you in this uh, revival we're experiencing. Sure. Thanks, Brother Tom. Those are beautiful words. Um, it's when I think back as, how, as to how the Lord has dealt with my heart, it's been truly amazing grace. Um, just the way the Lord brought us here, mm -hmm. the way that I, I lived in Australia for a little bit as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was brought up in a Christian home. But um, I, if anyone asks me before you can say I'm a Christian, the Holy Ghost must be first birth in you. And I think that's what the Lord Jesus Christ said. You must be born again. Right. So when I think back as to where I really started, it was a couple of years ago where the Lord dealt with my heart mm -hmm. um, by grace several times. Right. And this one time I knew I could never, I, I didn't want to be the same man I was in the past. Mm -hmm. So I started seeking the Lord based on his promise of the Holy Spirit. Right. Now once that happened, everything became new. Okay. Um, I started feeding on the word. I started um, listening to the messages. I sat, sat in the congregation for a while. And uh, we've been through our ups and downs. We've been through our, our struggles. But sure. uh, you see the Lord's hand in everything. And that's, that's what's blessed my heart. Um, moving on to the SFU meetings, it's how I got involved. Yeah. I, I really don't... Uh, when I was thinking about it with the brothers, and uh -huh. it's just the leadership of the Lord. Right. It's not something we sought to lift up anybody in particular. It's not something we seek to say, this right. is what's happening. But we find ourselves, everyday life, it's yeah. still the whole same Holy Spirit. Even testimonies that came forth from when we're gathering as friends, playing soccer, mm -hmm. when we're just conversing with one another, uh, just seeing how the Lord sovereignly moving and preparing the hearts of, of the people for what he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, the first, uh, I guess one of the first meetings was when I th you came up right. uh, and you spoke, uh, at, had the question and answer session. Mm -hmm. uh, just being that a part of that. It yeah, could it be a little volatile. It, it, <laughs> it, exactly. You remember what happened uh, in regards to the, the man that uh, was sort of contentious. Yeah. But just how the Lord moved each person into their respective places of responsibility and used them mm -hmm. as, uh, as we yielded ourselves. Well, you did um, a special part because <laughs> I, I know in particular, because I know how I've been to many and done many over the years, and how that students in particular, you can have an open forum, and if you get one there that's a little contentious, he right. wants to have the attention. Right, right. And I believe in particular, uh, I, I dealt with one, and one was raising up to do it again, and the uh, Lord just put it on you just right. to answer the question. You, you asked me, you said, but Tom, can I take this? I said, absolutely, David. Right, right. So you, you cooled the whole thing down. The Lord used you. Right. Once again, God's grace. Yeah. Um, like you're saying, you're, you're correct in terms of the volatility. Um, people, you're dealing with emotions. You're dealing with people that are uh, not necessarily born again. So I think Brother Bram said one time that uh, without the Holy Ghost, a man is just like a brute beast. And right. it's, it's very volatile indeed. So when, it, when that happened, it's just, once again, yielding to the Lord and uh, just being able to be used to uh, calm the situation mm -hmm. so that the Lord could have his way. Um, but how did this all get Yeah, and you, get but you continued to have fellowship, right? Yes, yes. That so was something laid on your heart, you, you felt. Yes. Uh, tell us about that. Absolutely. Uh, Dan Florence is a, is a very good friend of mine, mm -hmm. and I know when the Lord dealt with his, with his heart, mm -hmm. um, it was just, it was put upon my heart, and. It was confirmed by another person just to get closer to Dan. Okay. Uh, so we became friends. And I think that's like Brother Bram said one time. He says, if you want to help somebody out, you first come on mm. a com common basis with that person. Right. Now, I didn't necessarily want to help Dan per se, but I appreciated what God was doing in his life. And that's what many times Tremendous. attracts me to people. Mm -hmm. uh, so seeing what God was doing in his life, we, we became closer. We played soccer together. Jean uh, then came on the scene. Mm -hmm. And once again, the Lord just moving each party to, to um, connect, if you want to put it that way. Yeah. So I think Brother Dominic approached me once and he told me about this young man that uh, had arrived at the church. And so I, I tried to do my best to reach out. Okay. Uh, once again, Jean played soccer, so we played soccer. We did the things no that, that guys yeah. did. Yeah. 
And then we started uh, getting a little bit closer. Um, we liked each other, we, we appreciated one another. We started going up to the to SFU um, and just hanging around with John. And from time to time, uh, Jennifer, mm -hmm. Tash, they came, the Lord dealt with their hearts. So now it moved from a natural um, friends and soccer and whatnot to now right. where we would go up to SFU and the Holy Spirit would take full control. Right. We'd sing all night, we would pray, we would just gather and fellowship around the things that God was doing and that's how it all started. Um, Anna as well was, was one of the, the big parts there. Mm -hmm. uh, Megan, all these different people. But what we find is each individual was dealt with by the Lord himself right. and now just bringing everybody together, not really knowing what was taking mm -hmm. place, mm -hmm. but God's bringing the different gifts, different people together. And when you start seeing all night prayer meetings or all night singing and or you start fellowshipping Marvelous. around the word, it's, yeah. it's completely something different. Yet we still, I didn't anyways, I didn't know the scope as to what the Lord was doing. Right. Um, and as that continued to evolve, uh, evolve, what you find now is the Lord now moving upon Jean's heart yeah. about the meetings at SFU. And how I got involved, I, I really don't know. I've asked the brother several times, I said, do you guys remember how you got involved? Because right. I don't remember how I got involved. It was just from time, day natural. to day, just yeah. naturally. So what we find now, we, we find people now taking their place. Dan's got a wonderful gift of song leading. Mm -hmm. I don't sing very well, mm -hmm. um, but I did learn to play the guitar. Mm -hmm. So now I was, a, I was asked to, to play the guitar. Okay. And initially you, you're hesitant, but once again, the Lord is dealing and moving and to what we have today where God is just sovereignly just brought many people in. I know for myself, even my brother Daniel, and how the Lord just dealt with his heart. That was, uh, a, that was a, a moving evening. That was a very moving evening. And why don't you tell us about that? Sure. What happened there? Sure. So my brother had, uh, I'm sure he can sh share the testimony there, but he mm -hmm. had come to one of the SFU meetings. Um, but before that, the invitation was extended to him. Okay. Now, f what I rem remember in that night was I texted him and I said, Do you, would you like to come to the SFU meetings? Now, he had basketball. He had different, I think he was Halloween, I think it was. Mm -hmm. So he had a party that he was invited to. Mm -hmm. And then here's, I am saying, why don't you come to the meetings? Yeah. So you can tell for someone not serving the Lord, it's, it's quite the toss up, it's mm -hmm. quite, quite the battle. Um, but the best part was he said, yeah, I'll come. Mm. I finally came home mm -hmm. and I came to pick him up. I said, Dan, are you ready to go? And he said, well, and when I heard that response, I started praying. I said, like, Lord, yeah. you've led me up to this point yeah. and I've, extended the invitation and here we are and I know the devil will be fighting. Here's the hesitation. So he finally kind of came down the stairs mm -hmm. and I try mm -hmm. to keep the right atmosphere and okay, let, well, let's, let's make him to the vehicle. <laughs> yes. Finally got into the vehicle and he said, oh, can we stop somewhere? I was like, there's no way we're stopping. We're going straight to us. I didn't tell him this, but in my mind I'm saying yeah. we're going right to the meetings. Right. Finally came to the meetings and on his heart he had a particular thin um, in regards to finding living truth, I think it yes, was. Yes, that's right. So, I think it was Jean that spoke that night, yes. spoke on living truth. You came up, the clo closing comments were on truth or living truth. Right. If you want it, accept it. Yeah. Now, after the meetings were done, we know the Lord dealt with his heart. Right. But then the next night was the Friday evening. Yes. And once again, just naturally speaking, mm -hmm. the boys had some, um, some people over for dinner. Yeah. Beautiful meal. So... Um, once we had dinner, mm -hmm. we went around and we started asking about testimonies and what the Lord had done and where are you at? So everybody went around and in my heart, I'm praying, I'm saying, Lord, let somebody ask Daniel. Let someone ask him. Mm -hmm. Let someone ask him. Mm -hmm. Nobody asked him. So I said, Dan, what, what about you? What do you think? And once again, he said, you know, I knew this was coming. Yeah. And I made, a, I made a promise to myself. Okay. I said, if I was asked, I would, I would just be honest and I would be truthful. Now, long story short, the Lord came in that room. We had been in the message conference with God, I believe it, w it was. Right. So Jean said, well, why don't we just call a conference? Ellie Ginda was there, Dan Adamar, my brother was there, I was there, Dan Florent, Jean, uh, different people were there. And prayer that night, that's where God saved my brother. Help him to acknowledge what, where he was in the kingdom of God. I broke down, I completely broke down. That must have just, been amazing it was, for you. It was, it was tremendous. Wow. Tremendous. Just to see God dealing with someone so sovereignly, I, hmm. it's just highlight. amazing grace. Totally yeah. a highlight. Totally, totally yeah. a highlight. So just moving on. And 
right now you see different ones gather, right. being able to enter into prayer, being able to express their heart to God. That when God started dealing with Victor, um, amazing things happened. Shocking to me. God just ripping out the whole place and saying, this is my, this is my son. There's no more room for you, Satan. We just want to yield to the Lord mm -hmm. so that if he wants to reach out and touch a soul, mm -hmm. that's his prerogative. That's, yeah. that's exactly what we want him to exactly. do. Exactly. Right. So all we do is try to create the atmosphere the best we can. That's what we're responsible for. And let God do what he wants to get done.